Well, it's nice to um, nice to meet you all. Um, I appreciate that it's somewhat one way traffic um, in this, but it do keep the questions coming in through the chat. And at the end, there will be a chance if you want to ask questions through the audio, you may. Um, so my name is Tej Porewald, and I'm going to share my slides here. And I am the program convener for the MSC International Development. Um, and we have two programs. So I'm actually going to be speaking. Some of you may be thinking about um, uh, in, enrolling on the MSC Humanitarian Action. And both of the programs basically run you know, side by side. So the format, the, the medium, um, the system, all of it is, is the same. It's just the content that's different. So hopefully I'll be able to, I could answer some of the questions that you, those of you who are interested in the humanitarian program. Um, or you, you can direct them to me, and if, if I'm not able to, I, we can we can um, put you in touch with someone else that can. So yes, welcome to SOAS online. And I think what what I'll begin by just saying that these programs began in the de Development Studies Department in October 2019, and that's just a few months. Well, actually, just as the pandemic was beginning in one part of the world, it reached London in March 2020. Um, and what we found was we we had started a program that, you know, was all online. But of course, as we are now, as we see so much of what we we do now in terms of um, education, in terms of other sectors as well, so much of the work that we're doing and learning that we're doing is is on, and communication we're doing is is online. Um, so hopefully, um, you're you're not feeling as though. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest questions: is like, is this a real degree? And I'm hopefully going to give you a sense of. Um, what learning online looks like um, and what the experience um, can be. So the session is just really very short. I'm just going to just give you a, a bit, for those of you who are interested in development studies, is kind of thinking about why study development studies. Um, but also I want to think about a little bit about what makes SAWAS, I think, different and, 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 and unique in lots of ways. Um, and I think one of the one of the things is that it's a place that people come for critical perspectives. Really, um, there are a lot of there's so many universities in the world that you can go to to study development studies or international development or humanitarian um, issues. But there, SOAS does certainly have I think a very a unique place in the world for um, being uh, or generating um, particularly critical um, perspectives, which are, are oftentimes are are challenging. Um, uh, mainstream approaches, which you often get in other places. So I, many of you might be coming for that and others of you might be coming for other reasons. Um, I might actually, in fact, invite you in the chat to say kind of why you're interested in, in, in studying at SOAS or how you heard about SOAS. So as we go, I can get a sense from you there too. Um, I'm going to then just give you a, a hint a little bit about kind of what distance learning looks like? What is it? What, what is the format? What would it mean for you um, in terms of maybe your, your schedule, your working lives, your personal lives to enroll on a distance learning program? And then I'll, I'll end with some frequently asked questions and then give you time to ask, to ask, ask some questions as well. So um, as I mentioned, I think one of, the, one of the attractions I've seen in the past with students coming to our programs um, and we 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 kind of in many ways pride ourselves on on the idea of critical thinking, and it's not to say we're the only place that does it. But in terms of de development studies, um, it, it it's known in many ways for thinking about the historical and political backdrops of development, um, because of course we can look at development and look at it in terms of SDGs. We can look at it in terms of the data. We can look at it in terms of targets. Um, we, there are many different ways in which we can understand development. So one dimension is that it understands, and of course, colonization, the experience of colonialism and its impacts in terms of um, the, the persistent inequalities that we see is one dimension of that. Another is reading between the lines um, and, and not taking kind of the idea of development necessarily at face value. And so really deconstructing the, the kind of rhetoric and buzzwords that we see floating around um, and, and questioning them, um, oftentimes for their Eurocentricity, um, how they're tied to systems and structures of power, which oftentimes themselves are producing inequalities. So it's kind of, you know, looking really at the face of the structures and, 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 and the systems 
and asking those kinds of questions about not just how we can solve problems, but also how we can address the causes and understand them um, better. And in order to do that, I think we, we really try to consider um, you know, a range of, di of approaches. Um, and I won't say it's all about kind of being kind of thinking non-Eurocentrically. It's also about looking at different ideological, theoretical, conceptual. And I think for the core modules, you'll find in particular, that's where you really get an idea of, oh, this is the kind of thinking that's out there, some of it at least, um, and some of the debates that exist there. Um, and it's a good way for you um, in your first module when you join the program to kind of get an idea. I mean, I think many people, uh, many of you might already be working in development um, or the humanitarian sector and maybe wanting to um, get more of an academic background. Um, and that's certainly the, the, the core modules for both of our programs are, are really very much about giving you that grounding. So it's not only about critical thinking, um, um, but it's also, of course, about writing. And um, I'll, I'll explain in shortly what, what that means in terms of the training that you get. So just an example, some of the debates and development studies, and this is just a couple of them that you would be introduced to in the core module for international development, um, is what do different measurements of poverty and inequality tell us? So we might look at one table, which tells us, and it uses um, the HDI, the Human Development Index, for instance. We might look at another indicator, which tells us, which looks at um, consumption, um, and may, may use different ways of understanding how inequality is actually being produced or where there may not be a, a, a comprehensive health service or something where we can then understand how health indicators might be mapped onto that. So we have different ways of considering. And I think looking at one problem, there may be many different ways, not only in terms of concepts, but also the, the tools so we, we expose you in many ways to, to different kinds of um, ways of thinking in that way. And one, so one, another debate is that um, of, of looking at capitalism, of course, um, you have to be critical of capitalism, um, even if you agree that it, if, if it, it's inevitability, we still must be very critical of it. Um, and so one big question that we have, um, which kind of runs across um, two of our weeks in the core module is does neoliberalism uh, which is the recognized oftentimes as the triumph of capitalism, is it the triumph? And how does this impact on development? You know, what is the relationship between capitalism and development? Um, and of course, they're intrinsically tied. So we look at that in terms of agrarian policy or industrialization, um, but we might also look at it in terms of labor, um, employment, um, um, alienation, um, poverty. So there's a number of different kind of ways in which one, one concept can lead. Um, and we encourage you in your essays to follow those leads. You might find an area that you're really interested in, but it kind of cuts across some of those topics. Well, you can develop your essays in ways that, that can, that can um, kind of cater towards your, your particular interests. The third question I have here is, is development by definition colonial? So the idea of progress itself Again, that's a deconstruction there. Even the idea of development, we question. Um, you know, where, where are its origins? Um, is, is there a timeline? Is it a teleology? Um, where is it located? What is the end goal? And who is um, outlining or dictating the terms of it? And who's managing those processes? So there are a number of different ways in which you can do that. And we have, um, I think, it was a really exciting um, area within our, some of our, our modules, which is in the area of decolonization and thinking, thinking decolonially about um, development. And there's a lot of, you know, really, there are really good examples that are out there of attempts to actually think um, critically about development um, and, and ways that don't reproduce the colonial um, patterns. The final example I have here is how is gender instrumentalize oh it's international women's day today so we might think oh is it is gender women necessarily um well gender is obviously about the kind of social construction of of of, of um 
um, gender can, is not just about um, men and women, um, it's also about the, the social construction of roles, um, but we can also look at it in terms of heteronormativity and how that exists within uh, development policy and discourse. And that's one area that we've kind of developed. I, ha I have an um, optional module uh, called the Politics of Gender and Feminism in Development, where we actually look at development and say, is our gender binaries kind of are an imposition in development where all of the, the struggles over the last four or five decades to achieve gender parity or gender, uh, gender equality, many of them are re really rely on the male female binary. Um, and so much, so much of the data, the targets, the planning, the programs, um, the intervention, so much of it are so much of, of, of that whole area of work really is hinged on that. And in this era of gender recognition and diversity, we're seeing there's some real challenges to those um, perspectives. And so that's a new area, I think, in many ways for um, the development sector more broadly. Um, and it's a really critical and important area that we should be looking at. And I think students have, have, have quite have enjoyed engaging with that. So that's just to kind of give you an idea of some of the topics, and those are just a few of them. Um, and I'm just going to show you in my subsequent slide what, what the topics look like. Um, I mean, so I've kind of outlined already kind of why join the, the kind of development studies programs um, at SOAS. Um, and of course, it's not just thinking critically, but it's also kind of has an ethos of progressive. Um, you know, many students come to SOAS, not all, they think, you know, they have got ideas of, of wanting to have a very, you know, socially engaged um, approach to the kinds of studying and the learning that they want, they want to do, and they want to apply it, and oftentimes think that they can make a difference in whichever areas they're working in. Um, another, I, I think, a, a important attraction really for distance learning is the pedagogy. Um, and it's, it's a very inclusive accessible, user-friendly, flexible, student-centered approach to learning. Um, and it's a different experience. It isn't about, and many of you might have done undergraduate studies or maybe even other postgraduate studies elsewhere where you were on campus. So you're a physical student who would go and attend lectures in a room with your classmates. It's a different mode of learning and the pedagogy is different, but we do have now, of course, these, um, we're on Zoom now, um, and this is one way of, of, of accessing um, the kind of university space, but there are also other ways as well. Um, so the pedagogy in many ways can, is, is more, more flexible um, for people who are located, and I can see Poland, Angola, uh, Cornwall, uh, Florida, you know, different places, you're all over the world. You would basically be sitting in a classroom um, and you'd be on the online discussion forums with people sitting all over the world. And so that brings with it new kinds of conversations, different kinds of experiences as well, which I think um, do make the distance learning experience unique. Hopefully all of that equips, you know, would ex equip you with the skills and knowledge to engage with the kinds of issues that, that we think are important um, and that you, you do too. So here are the aims of the distance learning programs that we have. Um, I mean, the first is, is really thinking about um, interdisciplinarity. So you might, and I think I, we use that word interdisciplinarity just because development studies in itself is quite interdisciplinary. Um, people have come from areas in terms of their previous studies who've studied economics, politics, anthropology, social policy, um, and even sometimes non-social science uh, uh, programs as well, and they still are able to kind of make that transition. Um, but most of it is uh, the interdisciplinarity. It gives you a, a kind of agility across different kinds of literature, um, different languages, I'd say, in terms of social science literature as well. Um, so we, give you, we try to give you a good exposure in that way. Uh, the second aim is giving you a specialized knowledge um, where we introduce case studies and examples that you then become familiar with um, because they, they, they are, or they might exemplify or illustrate something that you might've read about as a theoretical or conceptual idea. And then you have the examples and case studies to, to kind of highlight like, this is what this means or has meant in, in, in practice. We also apply um, a lot of policy thinking in terms of 
um, the, the teaching and the, the curriculum that we have um, so that you're you're not just reading theory. It's also related to um, whether it's contemporary policy, but it might also be policy shifts that have taken place over time as well. So giving you that introduction to how the significance of policy is, but for you to be able to also relate your learning to policy. And the final aim we have is having the kinds of analytical skills um, to proceed to, um, and, and, and written skills, of course, within that, to be able to either move on in terms of your career, professional development, um, or even potentially go on for further research. So those are the four main aims of the program. Um, and, and basically, the distance learning programs, both of our programs, have this structure. And you can see this structure on our uh, web page as well. Um, and it's, it, there's actually some more detail there if you, if you like, but just for today's purposes, I wanted to just show you what, what, it, what, a, um, what the program would look like um, over the two years. And so basically, if you're joining now in April, and we have intakes in both April and October of each year, um, that you would take your first module and it would be one module at a time. So you're not going to be overloaded with many different modules at, um, and having to read across the, the different kind of reading lists, you'll be taking one at a time. But they are, um, that, and this is, the, this is the pedagogy, is that we would begin um, and you would begin in April, around the mid-April um, or mid-October, whenever you'd register. And we basically have 12 topics. And each week there is a, a discussion forum that goes. Uh, alongside the topics and you would be engaging um, along with that. So you've, the module would run from April until August. And then the next one would be um, from October until February and then so on. So you can see here, you'd be taking 30 credits at a time. And while you're doing those 30 credits at a time, times four, and this is showing you what it would look like over two years. Um, you would then ha eventually have the, the dissertation. And the dissertation is actually um, run throughout the module, through, sorry, throughout the program. So you'll be doing these 30 credit modules and in between them, you'll have a couple of weeks in which during those weeks, you would have dissertation, a mini module um, to kind of begin to get you thinking about your, your topic. So it's a very guided kind of approach. You're kind of, you're being guided through the modules and then you're, of course, your core modules. You have the two, uh, the word guided again here, the two, two um, modules you choose from the development studies list, and then you can take an elective module from outside of development studies as well. Um, and, 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 and that's basically what the progression of your program would look like. And if anyone has, well, we can, you can ask at the end, I suppose, or if in the chat, if there's anything you like to ask here. Um, so this is what the, the core module looks like for the MSc International Development. And this is the module that's called Political Economy and Sociology of Development. So you can see it, it covers, it spans quite a few topics here. Um, and it, it gives, I mean, a quite, I would say it's an overarching kind of approach, but actually it's quite a, fine, a foundational approach to contemporary development studies. And it actually mirrors what we do on campus. So it's not a different curriculum altogether. It actually draws from our core modules um, on campus. Um, and in many ways, I guess, the, the, it, it's not just the curriculum. Well, the curriculum is very similar, but it, what, it, what makes it different from the on-campus is just the pedagogy. Okay, so you can see here from the schedule, the topics begin. So this is actually last April's dates specifically, but you can get an idea here. Um, the essays, so you begin in April and the first essay would be due um, around the 5th or 6th normally of August. Um, and it, it's not as though you're every, every week going to be intensely busy. But what happens is that you, you end up having, um, you have group seminars, which are like this, where you'll be on a gallery on Zoom um, with your classmates and with the tutor. 
Um, but you would also have in between, you can see the study skills seminars or webinars, um, which are there to help you in terms of, for those of you particularly who might be coming from different countries, different writing styles, or who have left um, you know, an academic setting or university for, you know, for after, for after a long time, you're coming back after a long time. So we do have those kinds of writing and study skills kinds of sessions as well. Um, so the PACE, um, so let me start, I'll show you, this is the humanitarian action core module as well, you can see. So it's the same format um, with, um, yeah, with a, a, a PACE of the introduction and you can see each week has a topic um, and you're all of your reading and you're commenting in the discussion forums as you're reading along the dis discussion forums are there to for you because obviously we understand that you're all in different time zones i think all of you here right now are we're all in different time zones so this is an asynchronous form of of learning so you will be for some of you it will be middle of the night others of you will be right in the beginning of the day and so therefore you can engage with each other in an asynchronous um, in an asynchronous time, but still be part of the same discussion. And so these weekly forums that I keep mentioning um, and e-tivities, like I think these are the two things that might distinguish distance learning and from other programs that you might see um, is that this, these are the discussion boards where you interact. This is where, this is the, the ongoing um, topics and weekly readings and interactive material. And, um, and so I can see one question here about the group seminar. So we, we basically do a doodle poll um, to, and, and we'll generally have two set in case the time zones are completely you know, unworkable. Um, I'm trying to think this term, I haven't actually done that mapping this term. The last term, I'll just say we did, we did a mapping to see the time zones and it was, I think the furthest east um, was Auckland and the furthest west, depending on where you want to say, see, let's say we're making Lon London at the center here, okay? I'm not trying to say not to be Eurocentric. Uh, <laughs> and the furthest west was um, Vancouver or Panama City, I think. So we ended up having two different time zones with, you know, a lot of students, you know, there'll be places where people are clustered, um, you know, Kenya, Rwanda, um, um, at that time, Myanmar for people who are working and then Middle East also, uh, Jordan. Um, they were, they find that actually the people in your class who, who are, who might be in the same region. Um, yeah, it's not even uncommon. So we had a, two, we had a, um, one of our uh, thematic seminars and students were engaging and we discovered that two were actually in the same city and they discovered they actually didn't live far from one another. So that was kind of interesting as well. So. You may, you may, you may find that those are places that you find you get to know people, even if it's just, you know, it's online too, but um, you realize you have more in common in that way too. So it, it's kind of um, a, a combination of things. So it's the weekly, you know, discussion boards where you're typing in, you're reading, you're commenting, you're given set tasks as well. So that's actually, it's not just, a, it's not a free, free for all kind of, um, I mean, you're free to also comment too, but that they are, they're quite structured. You'll be, it's kind of like, here are the questions for this week. Um, you know, looking forward to hearing from you all. And it's kind of like you go and you've got from the beginning of that week until the end at whatever, whatever time suits you to do that, to, to post your um, reflections and, and responses to your other, to other classmates as well. So that's, that's part of the discussion forums. The other side, so those, those are the discussion, weekly discussion forums. So we also have etivities. So those are assignments or act, they're, they're, they are essays or assignments. Okay, that's our way of calling an etivity. Um, so basically those are, those are what you will be submitting for your mark, for your assessment for the overall program. And there are five of them, even though technically we have six. But one of them is participation and engagement interaction. Um, and basically you would, you would have a set um, uh, a, a, a task to do. So eTivity um, 2, for instance, is an information and, and a, a library retrieval task. Okay, so you would be given a go and find a reading and tell us a bit about it and then post it. It's a very quick, short one, but it's that you're actually learning kind of 
you know, referencing library skills, right? Using the online sources. So that is one, and it's worth five. It's not, sorry, that one is not worth any points, but it's just to show that you, and that you understand how to do that task. The next one is a um, text critique. So there'll be a set reading, and then you're given, you, you're given a gu guidance about how you would write about that text. And, and then it moves on. So Etivity three is text critique, four is an essay plan, five is another text critique. And then six is the final essay, which is 5,000 words. They're all building. So it's the pedagogy is, uh, it's very, you know, formative until the summative, the final 5,000 5, word. It's all helping to support you. So you're not, it's low risk in many ways that you can, if you, if you have been out of education for a while, at least you'll get that feedback. So it's 5%, you know, 15%, 5%, and then it's 70% for the final essay. And that's where that goes. Okay, so, okay, so um, Dara has asked about um, outside of scheduled seminars can interact. Well, uh, well, what happens is that people, the, the students, do arrange things outside, and they do get to know each other through the online, um, you know, whatever forms, whether it's WhatsApp or um, other um, kind of online mediums. So, absolutely, students are welcome to get to know each other in your group. You would also be able to, um, and I'm going to mention that in a little while about being at SOAS, right? So you you would so much has gone online now at SOAS in terms of the campus on campus activities that you'll find that you will probably be taking advantage of attending seminars there, which are open to the public also, or they might be a departmental seminar that we'll be holding that will also be online. So um, you'll find that that will also be another place for you to get to know even the wider kind of community at SOAS and not just on your own program. But for your own program, really, it's the thematic seminars, the discussion forums, and then of course, you'll be in your groups and you'll find that students will probably will want to get to know each other as well. I hope that answered that question. Okay. Okay, so basically, so this is great. I've just come to commonly asked questions. I'm getting a few. So Matej, um, that's a very, that name sounds like mine. <laughs> um, how, how many students on average you take in one group? So, um, I mean, basically it depends on the larger group um, in your, in your um, year or your cohort. It, we, we basically won't have more than 20 in a um, uh, in your discussion forum group, but there may be 40 in the overall group, but we will we'll always keep it, we'll cap it at 20. Um, you'll have opportunities get to, to interact with the others and the other groups, but we try and keep it to that it's just because we want you to be able to have a smaller, um, uh, yeah, a sm smaller group, so you'll have more interaction. So I'm just going to give you a couple of questions and you keep, feel free to keep on asking the questions in um, the chat as well. Um, so how much study time should I plan to spend each week? This is one of the most commonly asked questions. And basically the answer is there's no set time um, to spend. And it really, has some. I mean, a lot of times it has to do with your pace of reading. Um, you know, maybe for some of you, English may not be your first language, or it may be that you're coming, you studied a science before, and now you're coming into social science. There may be other reasons, but, or you may be a very fast reader. So maybe familiarity with the concepts for the first few weeks, you may need more time. Um, but I would say for the first two to three weeks, I would try to set aside time for the core readings. And basically what you'll, you would see on the, um, um, and we basically everything is on what we call the Bloomsbury learning environment or the Moodle. And you basically will log in there and you'll see for the topic one, you'll see that those readings will be there and there'll be two normally, two um, core readings, sometimes three if they're short, but normally two. And they shouldn't be longer than 30 pages for both of them really, or maybe 40 pages. Um, and so you'll have time, you'll have time during the week to read those. 
And many students who, I mean, who are full-time doing this full-time and they're not working at the same time. And I think that is another big question people ask, is it possible to work alongside? So, I mean, this is set up for people who are working, but it's also something that people who are not and who are doing this full-time can actually, you can do all of the readings and get a lot more out of the course um, if, if you're able to. Um, and so I would basically just try and pace it and get to know your yourself in terms of your own needs. So maybe begin with having 30 to 60 minutes a day if you're working, especially, or maybe it's 60 minutes to, you know, two hours a day. I don't know how much time you would need, but I think the, the main point is to schedule it and to keep that time to really make sure that you don't think that it's something you can do at the end. I think that's the biggest warning I would give to anyone who wants to join our distance learning programs. It might be different in other universities, but it's not something you can leave to the end. I hope you got a sense of that. It starts from the week one, and basically you have to be in it. You have to be on those discussion forums because you also won't get to know your classmates either. You won't be able to contribute to the discussions and you won't be able to be part of the pedagogy, which basically builds from activity one until six. So you really do, once you commit to it, you know, you start, but it's, it may not, it may just be a couple of hours a week for you to do it. So um, it is very doable. People do it. I would say probably most, most of our current students are working either part-time or full-time. Many of them are actually working in um, the field in terms of working in, in, in the development sector. Um, and they are doing this alongside and the flexibility um, in terms of the timing is a big attraction, but also the fact that they don't have to take study leave from work. They can do this alongside while they're working. So I would say um, maybe a majority of our students are actually doing that. And maybe that is part of the attraction for, for those of you, you, you who are here today as well. Um, the live se sessions, I think we, we have added those in because I think they are something that students seem, I think, seem to want to have, but we don't make them compulsory. Um, that's because not everyone can make them um, for various reasons. But we do record them so you can always catch up on them later if you're not able to attend. Okay, here's another one, which is if you're returning to university after a long time and you think you feel rusty and uneasy about your academic writing skills, how will you adjust? Um, and I've already answered that as well by saying, telling you about the pedagogy, those etivities are designed to ease you into academic writing. Like, so I mentioned the information retrieval exercise to the short. And when I say they're short, actually, the information retrieval is two, 200 words. Etivity three, you know, is 600 words. It just moves, it moves on um, very gradually. So you're built, they're kind of building blocks, short, small tasks that you do, but you very quickly, you get feedback as well. Um, and you're able to then move on to the next one, having learned from you know that experience, um, so you'll you'll be, would will be able to, um, and if you need the extra support, we do have, as I mentioned before, the study skill sessions to help you further. So people who are in London or in the UK or flying through, which is also not completely uncommon, can get access to the campus and library. Um, so you just have to come into the um, to campus and check that it's you know the library is open at that time on that day. And, and just show them your, um, they'll, well, you have an email. Once you have a SARAS email ID, you can just show them your registration kind of confirmation um, and they'll, they can issue you with a, a card, the library card. Are there any other questions that you might have? Ah, so Dara has asked, what would, we recommend from the pre-reading list. So once you've enrolled, we send out a um, kind of open access list. So meaning that you don't have to have a university ID to get access to them. Um, some of them are links, but you can just kind of click on and then we, or some of them are PDFs that we just send. Um, and they're actually taken from the core module. Um, so hopefully that will give you an idea. And I think people enjoy coming into a module having already read at least one or two of the readings that are on the list. 
Okay. Um, when are we able to share the curriculum for the upcoming April cohort in order to plan alongside? So once once you've registered and enrolled, we can, I mean, I don't, we will still be finalizing and updating the BLE and everything is on that, on the Moodle. Um, so that would be there, but we will have the calendar. I, I don't know if that's what you mean about the curriculum for the, in terms of planning alongside work. So I showed you that kind of table, that grid. We've got others that kind of are more detailed. They show when, which activities do, so you can plan ahead knowing that maybe you want to take, you might need a day or two that week if you've got a particularly busy week that you know to plan for that. So that that would be that's that's made available. So I think as soon as you know you you registered and everything, you begin you can you'll get you'll be sent those kinds of details. Um, are professors available through their email for questions for students? Yes, um, they and we are. Um, we also have online office hours. So I I basically on the bottom of my email ID I have a I have a link. I think it's on my personal web page now as well, but you have, yeah, you, you can book, um, cause you may not, if you've got quest, lots of questions, sometimes it takes longer to actually answer an email or for someone to get back to you. So sometimes it's easier just to book an appointment. Um, and I do them as 20 minute slots and I hold office hours through the week. And so do other, um, the other, um, academics as well. Is it possible to receive a student ID? Yes. So you would need to come in and do that though. Um, and that, as I mentioned, that process you show, you can show it on your mobile device to show that you've registered um, and you've got your SARAS ID already um, to get the, the, call, the, the physical um, SARAS. The library card is the ID. Is there a possibility to have direct one-on-one -on -one interaction with lecture if there are any specific? So basically that's what the office hours are. Um, I mean, the, the, your, base, your, your main interactions would be with the associate tutors who are very accessible. Um, they tend to people, who, they'll, they'll be um, themselves people who've re, have worked in the department. Have, most of them have done their PhDs already in the department, um, are very familiar and are also teaching on campus. So they have office hours across on campus and, and um, uh, also online. Um, so you're able to access them, but also the course, the, the, the module convener as well. Does an online master's is equally valuable to progress to? Yeah, so I, I would say yes, we do. I, we have actually students in, in this, this year, um, one who has nearly finished, but has already started the PhD. Um, and I think it, it actually depends on your your background and your profile and what program you're going on to do the kind of studies if it's in development studies probably yes um, but you would need to look to the program that you're thinking of applying to i mean what i would add there is that also um i mean for us we do we do very strongly believe that our um, online uh distance learning programs are um of, of equal value uh to our in-person programs and that they are just a, it's just a different um, uh, different way of, of taking a program. Um, but what I would say is also when you get your certificate after you've completed your program, it won't actually say distance learning on it. Um, it, it doesn't say in person on it either. It's just a certificate um, from us as, as a university. So um, again, you know, I think sometimes there are kind of worries from students that my, my certificate's going to say distance learning. And would that mean that maybe certain institutions, maybe certain organizations might see that differently um, to a in-person program. Uh, but for, for us, we don't differentiate between those. Yeah. I mean, I might even say that distance learning is, for some people, it's actually better. I mean, it depends on what you're coming in for. I mean, if you want the interaction on campus, yes, of course, it's great to be on campus. But I, but if, 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 if you're there, if you're coming to do a master's because you want to dig deep into the kind of topic areas and you've chosen the modules, you know what you want to do, you can get a lot out of this. And really, um, I mean, what I've seen is people's writing improves so much because of our pedagogy. It's very different from what we do on campus. So our on-campus module, um, which is comparable, say, to the development studies core module, um, you, know, you would do uh, an article review 
and then uh, two article reviews and an essay. Um, and here we've done these six activities, which are shorter, um, and they come quite quite quickly during those you know 12, 15 weeks. But you you you'll find that your progress you know it's it's over two years. Our on campus is is of course on um, is a it's either part time for two years or full time one year. But it, the pedagogy itself is quite different, um, but equally valuable, um, ab absolutely. And I think, I mean, we have, you know, we have people whose, um, you know, places of employment are, are sponsoring them from, from various international agencies. So it's, it's certainly recognized in the development sector and the humanitarian sector as well as being, a, a, you know, a good degree to do if you want to work in that area. Um, I, I just wanted to go up to one of the um, Ines has said about the so my dates I mentioned they, those dates were not correct so just ignore those that was just showing the sequence I didn't have, didn't have a chance to update the dates so the dates they fall slightly later um, this year than they did than they did the previous previous cycle. I think there's a question about um, visa, um, a visa support. So in terms of the online and distance learning programs, um, the university doesn't actually provide a, um, uh, doesn't actually provide a letter to assist students with like a, an actual visa um, to come to study um, in the UK to, to, to be based here whilst you're studying. However, if you are coming to um, visit the UK um, and uh, you, you would like to ask um, if there is anything the university can provide, I would contact our advice um, at soas.ac.uk team who are fully trained on, on visa advice, and they'll be able to give you the most up-to-date information on what we are able to provide and what we aren't able to provide in terms of uh, visiting the UK, because visiting the UK um, uh, would be different to getting a student visa to the UK um, one is is for the full duration of the program and which would be um, based on um, actually being in person um, and the other would be a short term visit to the UK, um, which would possibly include um, coming to the university and, and meeting um, staff at the university. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. I, I almost was thinking, how much how much more time do we have, Kim? Uh, we have another fifteen minutes or so. Okay. So what I was thinking, I'm, I'm, while I'm talking about one, I was thinking of just quickly. I'm going to stop my share, and going. I was going to just show what the BLE looks like. Um, and then while well, answering another question here, um, is Heidi. Um, is thinking about timekeeping and yes, have, juggling lots of different things alongside work, family. It's something that our, you know, our students come into knowing you wouldn't be alone. I think that's one, one, one point to make. But the other is that it, you will, after the first week or two, and actually the first week is not, um, is more of a, it's a, we have a, it's basically a socialization activity, which is just post about yourself. Tell us about yourself. What are you, what are you interested in doing? Tell us about your background. Um, and after that, it becomes much more academic, but you'll find that you will find, you'll, you'll find a groove that, that works with your own circumstances. And because it's asynchronous, there isn't pressure to be online at the same time as other people. Um, I'm just gonna show you. Um, and keeping up with the readings, um, of course, is, is a big part of it, but you'll find that keeping up, I think different students have different strategies of what keeping up means. I mean, I think the bare minimum is reading, at least one of the core readings, just so you can begin there and onto the discussion forums. And some people will say, okay, I'm going to read two of them. And others be, over the week will, will begin to say, okay, I'm going to read a couple of them or read one, participate in the forum and then carry on reading. 
Um, and you'll, I think you'll, you should, through your own experimentation and what works for you, be able to, to see what works. But you yeah, wouldn't. I think, and, and that's kind of why we look at uh, a spreading the program, because some students do ask, why is our um, online and distance learning program um, different in, in duration to our, um, to our in-person programs? And, and a big element of that is taking into consideration what our students would be doing uh, alongside studying and, and lots of different um, commitments that they may have um, as they're taking our program. Um, so it's definitely something that we've kind of considered in, in our approach. Yeah. So this is what the BLE looks like. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So this is what the core module looks like. This is from last year, last April. Um, and so basically everything is here. Um, yeah, there's a lot of other things going on, a lot of announcements, events and things. Um, and what you'll see here is the calendar. And I was kind of showing you that in, on one of the slides, um, and that's the date there, the 13th, of course, it's different um, now. Um, so you can see that there. Let me just see what else we've got down here. We had an October one as well, so I think that's why I'm, I'm not in the right place here, actually. This is what I wanted, activities and forums. This is where you'll spend a lot of time. Um, you go into the activities and forums and uh, let me show you this schedule. This is the kind of schedule one of the questions is about is planning ahead. Please ignore this. Um, we've, we're actually changing this now. It's not even in place yet. Um, is our is that the activity one is actually weighted 5%, it's 0% 5. Yeah, so it's slightly different, but it's not too different. But this is what you will need at the beginning of this of, of your um, basically your your journey on this program is is that all of these modules that you'll take all four of them will have the same format the same kind of schedule um, and so once you've done one module the core module will tend is the one where you have all the teething issues then you once you've worked out that this is what is expected you will be able to then start the your, your first optional module and the second and the third ones, knowing what to expect. Different content, of course, but the same nativity structure. So this shows you how many days you have to write them, to work on them. You've, so we'll have start date and then an end date when you need to submit and we tell you when you'll get your feedback. So it is quite structured and you'll know, you know what to expect. And you can therefore also, um, let me just show you one of these as well. So I'll, maybe I'll show you a couple of them. I'll show you what the access and socialization looks like. So basically you can see here, we tell you exactly what to do. <laughs> you know, this is introduce yourself, tell us a bit about yourself and then tells you what to do. It's like, tell us about your interests and hobbies and how you survived the you know, COVID-19 lockdown, lockdowns, multiple ones we've had. Um, and then you go down and you can see here, and see people have posted here. All right, so that's that's what that looks like. And then, you know, we have the other ones which are more, um, I'll do it, I'll show you the text critique. So you analyze one of these articles and identify its strengths and weaknesses. And then you can see here, it's, it, it's really broken down and this is where, this is our pedagogy. We've broken it down. We've said, you, here's what you read. You choose one of these two articles. And then we, we have given you a very structured way of doing it. So you, you're gonna post 300 words on the, and share it with your classmates. You're gonna take the feedback and then you're gonna submit a 600 word thing, having taken on the feedback. So it, it's just showing that it's kind of training you and teaching you how to take advantage of feedback and reflection. And that's, so that's a peer to peer learning. You'll get the kind of learning through the feedback from um, through the marks um, as well and the feedback. So, okay. Um, so Dara has a question. I'm especially interested in social research methodologies. It's very relevant to my work. To what extent are research methodologies taught and which modules are best for research? 
Uh, so we have our dissertation mini modules, and that's where that is. I mean, our, 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 the other modules are very substantive or theoretical or conceptual. So there'll be areas rather than um, talking about methodologies. Um, the dissertation mini modules give you some, and I, 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 we're at this stage, we're not quite there yet with the kind of doing research methodologies um, and has a lot to do with the ethics. Um, and dur during, especially during this, this time period in terms of getting kind of risk, doing the risk assessments and ethical approvals as distance learning students. But that all, um, that all happens within the, the mini modules. And as I mentioned to you, those mini modules, um, they happen um, in between your the other optional and the core modules. So you we focus there and there are specific tutors that are working on that as well, associate tutors who who would and you you are assigned to supervisors as well for the dissertation, I forgot to say. So you would then be working with someone on your dissertation. So we we'll probably just have a few minutes more in case and I before we could take one um, more question if anybody has uh, a final question that they'd like to drop in. Um, I think maybe one thing as well that might be um, interesting for you to do is we do have on our website, they're not development um, MOOCs, but we do have MOOCs on our website, so massive open online courses. Again, they're not exactly the same as the online and distance learning um, programs, but it can give you kind of a dip, dipping your toe into how um, online and distance learning um, kind, kind of works in some respects. So it might be something that you want to look at on our website. Um, and as, de as development studies is such an interdisciplinary um, kind of area, um, it, you probably will find that there of a few of the options that we do have um, on our MOOCs, that there will be some overlap um, with development studies to some extent as well. So that might just be something you want to do, um, either just to kind of view it and see. Um, I mean, I took, um, I took a couple of them when we were in our first uh, lockdown with COVID, just so that I didn't go into a Netflix wormhole and never <laughs> never emerge um, and I have been out of education for quite some time so I did find that though it said you know it's about two hours a week um, of your time to, to do this in about four weeks I found for me it was more like three to four hours at the start and then as I went through I kind of adjusted so it is just something for you to think about in terms of as you go through the program you will definitely kind of um, evolve in terms of your studies and in terms of your approach and in terms of the way you think and, and the way you write and all of those areas. Yeah, you might even be able to balance a Netflix with the essay, you know, and reading as well, <laughs> if we all do. <laughs> so I think there was one last um, question, which was just about, um, uh, oh, yeah, I think you've answered it as well, about modules, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, basically with the modules, I mean, the main thing is once you've enrolled, you, the core module is the one you have to do first anyway. Um, and you may be asked at the beginning which ones you want to take, but not all modules are offered in the same term. So you are given a choice. So you basically, I think a few weeks um, towards the end of, of, the, of the module, you will, you'll have a choice then um, to decide on the options. Great. Well, thank you all for joining us today. And thank you so much for an amazing kind of overview and presentation and um, uh, providing lots of answers to um, all of the questions. I, th I think I definitely had some takeaways um, from today's event as well. Um, and yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. We hope this has been um, helpful to you. Uh, we hope it's, it's kind of made a, little, a few things more clearer for you um, or possibly just solidified some of the um, information that you'd already received and the decisions that you're making moving forward. Um, we will be hosting uh, more general events. So again, um, as an online and distance learning student or whether you're a student coming to our um, in-person programs, uh, we, we would like everybody to attend um, equally. So if there are any other sessions that um, are more general that you think you want to attend, please do feel free. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for attending today. And again, again thank you for such um, a wonderful kind of presentation and overview. Thank you. Great. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.